It's quickly become apparent that Jared Kushner, the 36-year-old real estate investor and husband of Ivanka Trump, is President Donald Trump's most trusted advisor within his inner circle, a circle whose top tier includes chief strategist Steve Bannon and chief of staff Reince Priebus. Now, it's pretty easy to know where Priebus and Bannon stand politically. As chairman of the Republican National Committee for five years, Priebus is the voice of the Republican establishment, and as the former editor of Breitbart, Bannon champions the populist economic nationalism that appealed to so many of Trump's working class voters. It's important to know where Trump's key advisors stand on the issues because it's almost impossible to know where Trump himself stands. Trump's not an ideologue, he's a pragmatist who's changed his views multiple times throughout the years. When it comes down to it, his political goals are basically this. We're gonna win, win, win. You're gonna get so tired of winning. You're gonna say, Mr. President, please, we don't wanna win anymore. It's too much. Of all Trump's advisors tasked with this charge of winning for the American people, Jared Kushner is the most important, but also the least understood. We simply don't know where he stands politically. And there are a few reasons for that. Kushner is only 36 years old. He's got no history in politics. And it's clear that even two or three years ago, being a top advisor to the most powerful man in the world wasn't remotely on his radar. His last big project was buying this cluster of Brooklyn buildings from the Jehovah's Witnesses in 2013 for 375 million in order to turn it into hipstery office space. Kushner, and Ivanka too for that matter, has always been a sort of hybrid of the left-leaning hipster generation and the older mega-rich business elite. And Jared was certainly born into wealth and lots of it. But his family didn't start out that way. Both his paternal grandparents were Holocaust survivors, thankfully making it to the United States in 1949 where Jared's grandfather Joseph, a construction worker, started building and managing New Jersey apartments. His son, Jared's father, Charles, then started acquiring real estate, turning Kushner companies, his business, into a billion dollar empire. This is the world that Jared Kushner grew up in. It was deeply religious. Jared was brought up in modern Orthodox Judaism. Massively wealthy and privileged, Jared was conveniently accepted to Harvard after his parents pledged $2.5 million to the university. And actually quite democratic. Charles Kushner was one of the most prominent donors to Democratic politicians on the East Coast. In fact, he was the largest single donor to the 2000 New York Senate campaign of Hillary Clinton. And then things came apart. New Jersey-based developer Charles Kushner is charged with hiring a prostitute to blackmail two witnesses in a federal investigation where he is a target. Charles' conviction was deeply traumatic for Jared, as, of course, it would be. It shook up his entire life, and not just emotionally, but professionally, too. At the age of just 24, Jared took over the massive empire his father built. And he wasted little time making a splash of his own. In 2007, Kushner Companies bought an office building at 666 Fifth Avenue in Manhattan for $1.8 billion, the most expensive single building purchase in US history. Unfortunately, it was really bad timing. A year later, the economy collapsed and 666 has not been able to generate enough money for Kushner Companies to pay off the debt even today. But despite this setback, Kushner kept at it. He kept making deals, or trying to, like the trendy tech office space in Brooklyn. It's clear that he's focused and driven and ambitious, but a success or failure in real estate tells us preciously little about where his mind's at politically. For all I know, he could still sympathize with the democratic values that his father funded so generously. The truth is, Kushner seems a bit out of place in the conservative, populist, nationalist White House of Donald Trump, until you account for two things. First, his loyalty to family. Kushner always sticks by his own. When his father was put away, he didn't abandon him. And when Trump retweeted, wittingly or not, some anti-Semitic imagery alongside a picture of Hillary Clinton last summer, Kushner wrote an op-ed defending him in the New York Observer, the newspaper that he owns. Now, that's the second place to look for hints of Kushner's politics. The Observer. It was here that he developed a friendship, even a mentorship, with Rupert Murdoch, the media magnate and owner of Fox News. Murdoch counseled Jared, gave him advice, sent over books by prominent conservative thinkers. And soon the paper began to take on a more right-wing bent. Some say Kushner even had a vindictive streak, using the paper to go after people who wronged him or his family, like, for example, New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman, who investigated Trump University. The hit piece The Observer published on Schneiderman is almost comical in its defense of Trump's scam school. 
A lot of people saw the same vindictiveness in the ouster of Chris Christie from Trump's transition team last December. Christie, of course, was the man who sent Jared's father to jail. Mr. Kushner engaged in a conspiracy with co-conspirators to hire prostitutes. This period is where Kushner may have begun to acquire more conservative values. But I have to be fair and say that these are just inklings of what may be in his mind. He barely ever puts things on the record. He barely ever speaks to the media. What we do know is that today, Kushner is overseeing a laundry list of things in Trump's administration, including heading the new Office of American Innovation, being the key liaison for diplomats from China, Mexico, and a dozen other countries. And of course, there's this. If you can't produce peace in the Middle East, nobody can. In most things, Trump and Kushner are opposites. One is loud, easily distracted, and media obsessed. The other is understated, focused, and media allergic. But they both trust family, and Trump definitely trusts Jared Kushner. For a president with such little grasp on policy and detail, that means Jared Kushner might just be the most influential person in the world. It would sure be nice to know a little more about what he believes. Oh my God, this couch is so comfortable. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. Happy Wednesday. This episode was brought to you by Squarespace. If you wanna make a website and you want it to be a really easy process, Squarespace has some beautiful award-winning designer templates to choose from that makes the process so simple. If I can make a website on there, which I did, I guarantee you can too. It's got 24 hour customer service, no upgrades, nothing to install, no patches ever, and picking your domain name is really easy. You can start your free trial at squarespace.com, and if you use the offer code NERDWRITER, you can get 10% off your first purchase. You can subscribe to this channel by clicking the circle that's right over there, and you can watch the last episode about Jack Nicholson and anger right there. I think you'll really like it. I'll see you guys next Wednesday.